Testo 570. Unfortunately, it needs a little work. This Testo 570 has served me well for nearly a decade and it's time to send it in for some repairs. Usually I do the service of the O-rings located in each one of the chambers for the pistons. You have O-ring with grooves in them that accepts two O-rings in each one of these handles. But I cannot do that because I made a big mistake. Something my father told me when I was using his very expensive Simpson meters when I was a kid. Do not use cheap batteries and when using batteries take them out if you're going to leave it sit for any time. It was a Sunday emergency. Ran out of batteries, even my backup batteries. So I went to a corner store, liquor store, and bought some cheap batteries. And this was the result. If you could see right in there, you'll see this beautiful green corrosion. Let's zoom in. Do you see that? Right there. Right there. So it didn't stop there. Apparently the liquid went right down. This is an opening to the circuit board. And some of the liquid went down into the circuit board. So we'll get back to that. So it would not start up when I after I replaced brand new batteries because I thought they were just dead batteries and no big deal. But if you look right here, and you see that beautiful green corrosion right on this chip right there. And you see that nice green corrosion there caused by the battery acid. And I think we got some more going on right back here, a little corrosion. Well, corrosion acid is a conductive material. And it's the exact same thing as if you took a 12 volt car battery and you got a piece of steel or a wrench and you dropped it between the positive and negative and you short it out. That is what corrosion does to IC chips. So this is not going in for rare. I'm gonna attempt to clean this. I'm gonna use some reverse osmosis water because I have a reverse osmosis filter and it's the same thing as deionized or uh, distilled water. You want water with no minerals, no salts in it, no contaminants at all. And it's an excellent solvent and it leaves your circuit board clean. So I will be cleaning this off and trying to power it back up. If it powers back up, because they won't fix this. They will tell me they have to sell me a new unit. It's unrepairable. So I'm hoping I could get it in operating condition so I could send it in and have them service my unit recalibrate it but there was one other thing I made a mistake a while back one time uh, a damaged regulator my nitrogen tank fell over it hit the high side gauge and made it so the needle would not show the true pressure one time I had over around a thousand psi but the needle only showed like 600 psi and I was doing a nitrogen pressure test on a unit that required 650 PSI. And, but it was actually at a thousand. Now, if you see the rating is written somewhere. Where is the rating written at? Hold on a minute. There we go. Right here. Can you read that? Let me get that so you could read it. Let me zoom in. Right there. Maximum 725 PSI. I believe that's 50 bar. So, oops, I exceeded that by quite a bit by going to 1,000. And when I went to 1,000, I believe these are their safety pop-off. So if you look right here, this is the transducer. So you have a low and a high side transducer. And if you see this little flap right here, it's not supposed to be like that. And if you look down inside, if it'll focus in there, I, 
don't know if you could see that, but there's a little tiny hole in that transducer. And I believe that's their overpressure blow off hole. And these were sealed down with a liquid, like I say, a epoxy coating in there. And you could possibly see that bluish coating. This one is down, this one didn't blow out, but I believe this one. So when I send this in for repair, if my repairs can save this, these are $735. After taxes, you roughly right on the spot at $800 almost, depending where you're at. I know in some countries it could be a lot more. They have like a 50% tax when you ship these. So you're talking $1,000 if you're unlucky enough to be in one of those countries where your duty tax imported puts this over $1,000. So my attempt will be to clean off all the acid corrosion, the alkaline from the leaky batteries, put batteries in it. If it works okay, then I send it in to get a new transducer. And after I get that new transducer replaced, then um, they'll calibrate it. I'll have them just do a complete rebuild on the things. I usually do it myself, but in this case, uh, I'll have them do it. And we'll see if we make a video on this coming back. after It's not out of warranty, so I expect to at least pay 125 bucks maybe $200 to get this uh, repaired and we'll see what happened but for nitrogen testing this is this is one fact you must understand about pressure gauges using old style analog gauges for pressure testing are just about worthless unless it's a real big leak but when you have a device that can like the field piece 480 V the SM 480 V or say this Testo 570 as you can tell you, this is the Testo 570 there is a feature on here and you can actually plug in power so you could leave this on for one day two days three days 72 hours I like to do pressure tests and start it on a Friday when I'm not going to work over the weekend. And I'll say leave a unit pressured up to 600 PSI if that's what the manufacturer calls for. And when I come back on a Monday, it'll still be 600 PSI. And that all depends on temperature expanding and contracting of your copper pipes. The Testo, you put it on its leak down feature for a nitrogen pressure decay test. You set the button, you set the timer, and it actually times down and clicks. And you can also use software. They have a software. And you can log into a software and have a computer literally logging the pressure and recording it over the 24-hour, 72-hour period of time that you perform this nitrogen decay test. And that's something I would do. Uh, for all my customers and what that does that actually gives you proof live that you literally performed a minimum of 24-hour nitrogen decay test nitrogen decay test on all big VFRs like Mitsubishi, Fujitsu, Toshiba, LG, Panasonic they require a pressure decay test and actually some of the older books when you'd read them and you'd set up a system they would have you say go up to 250 psi for eight hours if it passed that test then you go up to say 400 psi for eight hours and then you would go to 650 psi for 24 hours and all that time you can data log this and see that you haven't even lost a few tenths of a psi and if you're on a job location and it's cold morning 40 degrees but you filled the system up later on in the day the day before say at 3 p.m. and it was 70 degrees you will literally see if you had 600 psi when you come in maybe the next morning you'll see it at 500 and say uh, 590 psi 589 psi but then later on that day, towards 3 o'clock, when it's almost 70 degrees, 
and the inside room temperature and outside have all risen, you will say 600 PSI. And then later on that night and the next morning when you come in and it's only 40 degrees outside, you will see that 589 PSI. And you'll see this up and down cycle, but you will always see your nitrogen pressure go back to where it was when you started at the temperature you started. So if I started at 70 degrees on a Friday at 600 PSI and it's Monday and I let the temperature go back up this at the same time of the day for the same amount of hours, I'll be back up to 600 PSI. That is the special great feature how accurate this Testo is because the Testo compensates for barometric sensor pressure so when storm clouds come over, uh, that actually will change your reading. The other gauges won't do that. So you may get a false indicator and think you have a small leak. But all it was was the weather changing. That's how sensitive they are. Uh, the Testo, like the new field piece SM480V model, also has temperature compensation where you hook in the gauges on the side and you clamp them to the copper on your unit. And there's a program for the nitrogen that you're pressurizing with to compensate what the pressure temperature relationship should be to prove to you whether you do or you don't have a leak. It actually compensates temperature and barrel pressure. This is one of the special features. Now, when performing this kind of pressure test, the best way to do it is you do not use gauges or you do not use rubber hoses, refrigerant hoses. You cap off the lines you're not going to use and you use soft copper lines like you were going to form your own line going, you know, refrigeration lines and you use a nut and cap and a fitting and you flare your lines and you literally put a soft copper line to your gauges down to the unit. And you could stick a ball valve in there because they're rated for high pressure as your shutoff valve. Not no flimsy little hose. You want to use a ball valve. And um, you could leave those in line and pressurize your system up to whatever your manufacturer tells you to. In my case, 600 or 650 PSI. And use copper. Have everything shut off except to the gauges. Shut off your nitrogen tank. Shut off your ball valve. Shut off your you're lying and shut it down walk away and come back one day two days or three days later and it'll be exactly the same if you use hoses with the little valves that are included with some of the hoses how they have the little shutoff valve in the rubber hose those are usually your leak point your your rubber gaskets may be your leak point your hoses may be your leak point how would have you like to spend 24 to 72 hours performing a perfect nitrogen test and you just spent five or six days eight hours a day brazing up a large VFR system and you have like 400 fittings 300 fittings spread throughout a building and you think you have a leak because it was your rubber hoses or it was the little funky rubber fitting you had on or maybe you left on your high vacuum rated uh, valve core depressor. Valve core depressors sometimes suck under high pressure. And so this is why you want to use copper only to your unit to here from your nitrogen tank to here. Open up your gauges and take your readings. So this will go in repair and we'll find out what they charge me to repair this if I could get this corrosion problem taken care of and get it started up. But for nitrogen pressure decay test, the Testo 570, only with your own made up copper line and fittings, or the new S-Man 480V. Those are my only two decades. Now this is over three decades of experience using test instruments for performing vacuum decay tests and nitrogen decay tests. And I come to settle on the 570 as my favorite for nitrogen pressure decay test. And just recently, finally, Fieldpiece stepped up to the mark and they set a higher goal 
they're doing a great job and they introduced that field piece 480 V I'll get back to you guys after if I'm successful you'll see another video with me putting batteries in here and firing up the face giving a thumbs up I could send it in to get it repaired if not I have an $800 paperweight